But dude, listen. Um, so again, I guess we should. We might as well fucking tell everybody, right? Because, because, uh, uh, yeah, there's no point in in trying to hide it. So we have already technically done a podcast together last week, but the fucking footage was all messed up, so we couldn't use it. So we're doing it again, just to show everyone how fucking committed we are to to doing this so i'm glad we are doing it again and this is going to be even better because we're more prepared and uh yeah all good so marek it's a pleasure you, to be sitting friend. with thank you, you again. for you 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 take a time uh, and, and thank you for that i appreciate it dude i will <laughs> gonna start off by saying the same thing that i said to you last week that let's do um, it uh, number one, it's a pleasure to um, to make your acquaintance, to meet you, even if it's over the internet. I am, I really, truly am a big fan of your work, and not just your your Thank cool, you. crazy yeah. sketches, but your but your artwork. I love your fucking artwork. I really, really do. There's a few guys in the in in our community whose work I love, um, and. Uh, yeah, like I'm a bit of a fussy person when it comes to art, but I, I really like your stuff, and it's very interesting. Thanks, man. I, like we last time we talked nicely about it. I know you're a big fan, and uh, I really appreciate it. And thank you for for that. Uh, yeah, I am also a big fan of my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I think, listen, let's, let's, let, <laughs> look, let's, um, let's take, well, well, ta- listen, ta- okay, let's, let's go with that then. What, tell me, why, why are you, why are you a big fan of your work? Yeah, I, it's, it's a nice question to be honest, because like, uh, I, I really, I really like what I do because, um, I, I put a lot of energy, you know, if you have a family and and uh, you have a job what I'm still working like car designer, I uh, I have to love what I do extra, you know. So this these paintings and everything is like extra part of what I really like to do to uh, uh, open the angle of uh, when you are doing car industry, everybody pointing business and pointing technical stuff and you have to be uh, you know modeler and good in alias good in presentation good in a, a kind of like how to say politic so I, I when I when I'm going to paint I feel so good and somehow um, I, I just feel you can be different you know you don't have to be like these people expected you yeah. can be car designer who is a little bit artist and I I really like how I found myself uh, very safe and very comfortable in this kind of role so that's why I, I'm a big fan of what I do because I really love it I, I that's uh, well that was that was one of my observations before is that you know you've got your sketching style is okay it's very unique in its own way as well that's but it's very it's kind of very precise as well and then if you look at the contrast between that these really delicate like lots of really fine strokes to make this communicate this volume and you try and you compare that comp- uh, to your artwork which is, seems it seems so free and so loose and so fun you know some of them uh some of them seem like you know really complicated um but for the most part they seem like it's i'm not you're not trying to be too precious it is like a release from this very precise work that we have to do in our day jobs It, now, maybe now will be sound a little bit more like like this, but uh, yeah, I, I think I, I, I'm good to do very precise sketch, like really realistic, and I can play with so many details because I really like design. But in, in the same way, I try to be very tolerant. That's why I start to painting very loose, 
and and I found so nice when you when you just uh, you are able to not stuck on this perfectionism, but you also like start to love this losing way, and and I think this makes certain of tolerance. And I I, I I I found myself to learn not say something is ugly or something is not good enough, and somehow I. Uh, I, when I'm when I'm painting, I want to just really uh, like uh, you. You can see it's my t uh, therapy, you know, because I, I I really don't care so much about technique. I just wanna I just wanna enjoy it, how the colors are dripping. Give it freedom to colors, you know. Give it freedom to lines. They they can they can play around. Uh, this is kind of nice contrast between realistic photoshops in our our business, right? Absolutely. Yeah. No. For sure. But Marek, you you mentioned last time that that, that um, you also have you also had periods where you really were struggling to cr make something even in your paintings that you were really enjoying. Like you had periods where it was frustrating as well. Can you just talk or elaborate a little bit on how you eventually got to this point that you're at now, where? you have learned to let go and just enjoy the process of creating? Uh, I don't know exactly what you mean in this moment, but let's say uh, the, you know, the, the, the car industry is quite uh, very strict somehow, you know, so I was just looking for my space there. I don't want to be like, not like be like everybody, but I feel it from the beginning when I come to the world of car industry i was more like the my vision was like bringing ideas enjoying the creativity because what bring me to this job is like frosty tea or some beautiful cars what i was meeting on the street and that time i was doing graffiti and when i see this beauty moving sculpture i said like no way this is this is the best you know like from graphic design product design and then I see the cars and how much emotions give it to me to looking on the street on these cars I was just fell in love and but uh, in the same time I was uh, every time more creative guy like uh, painting graffiti doing this kind of creative stuff and, and try to do different you know not like everybody I when somebody painting graffiti which letters I painting characters or I painting product design on train or something you know so every time try to bring new volume to the game so I said I don't want to be like normal the car designer you know because I am not it's not like something what I what I have to do it's something what I am and I have so many issues which people when they tell me man you are not designer you are artist you should be not here or something I really heard so many times in my professional life when people judge me like you are just dreamer you are just artist man you are no designer and i said you know okay it's uh, i don't think so we have to be everybody the same i believe like i can bring some value to the game and when we everybody are different everybody brings something we are a great team and this is what i'm believing you know not like everybody have the same level of alias skills and knowledge the same level of Photoshop knowledge. No, 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 no. Something like that is for me is no way. I, I, I want to find different people when they make steam and they they talk about things. Everybody see different perspective, and that you can build nice projects, right? So I said no. I will be myself. I am painter. Okay, I'm artist. Let's do it. But yeah, I'm I'm fucking creative, you know. So guys, if if you are clever, you can use me. You know, it's not just like. I'm sitting there and painting some uh, some face of some beautiful ladies. I, I can do a car for you, but different car, you know, maybe you will like it. So uh, I start to be proud and more believe myself what I'm doing. And some interesting. So I'm, I'm more I'm more creative guy, to be honest. I'm not like super car designer when can uh, everything in cars I'm so good I'm so great in clay no no come on I'm, I want to be honest you know I really enjoyed clay I love it clay be all day running around it's so great but what I'm not really enjoying it's this kind of 3d and, and modeling to be honest it's like uh, it's, it's it's important but it's not like my favorite part you know it's not my super benefit I have different benefits but it's also 
I, I'm able to do that. But I just want to say some people really, uh, they can do just this, you know, or something, you know, they, they don't know how to pay, they don't know how to bring new ideas, but they are good in cash, maybe they are, it's fine, it's completely fine, I, I, I like it, you know, so, so, yeah, what was the question? <laughs> No, that no, well, it was. I, I guess it was was pretty much that. It's fine. But um, <clears throat> did you did you always have the confidence to in the design studio to say, look, I am an artist, but I bring something different to the design table, and it doesn't mean that I'm not a designer just because I come from a graffiti background, so to speak. No, let, let's say. Let's say like that, uh, almost every time I have to super fighting in the beginning, like uh, when the people start to respect you, maybe when they start to trust you because they watch more like some artist, more like some guy who is just like uh, make, make so much fun, you know, I'm more fixed to some advanced studios more. Oh, I did in Shkoda the mostly the concept cars and some visions and stuff like that. But I was also uh, did a couple of facelift, you know, what is I think one of the hardest thing doing nice facelift when you have a uh, fixed body and you have to just change it uh, bumpers and and, and, and and this kind of details and doing fresh uh, to convince the customer to buy it. It's not easy job, I have to say. So I don't know, man. I, I can do, but I, of course I'm enjoying this creative job because I'm creative, I, I have to say. I, I really feel so energy when I do something and every time people like it to do what I do. So I, I, I found so exciting and I really enjoy it to do. And in the same time, really, I, I, every time when I went, every company would I went, they, they, there was certain of like, like I have to build everything from the beginning uh, to grow. When I, I get trust after a couple of months, maybe even years. Or in Škoda, for example, they that was really tough. And when I left uh, out after a couple of years, they 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 somehow start to respect me and start to also like contact me. Like maybe we will come together again and some. Something like that. So I was really surprised because it was really tough for me, you know. But it was good. I I I, I learned my I teach there. I mean, I learned everything there, you know, in school. Marek, you did a lot of art artwork for Skoda as well when you were there, right? Like I saw, there were rooms that you like big walls that you decorated, yeah. and you and 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 show cars and and all sorts of artwork that you did as well. I saw quite a lot of that. You're right. I was quite lucky because uh, they they know about it. I, I'm doing something like that, and then I met the main architecture guy from Škoda, and and we we somehow chat, you know. And then I did for them some stuff, and then was nicely coming automatically. Like it was some design exhibition is in Prague, so I did some 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 background for the presentation of the car, and I also painting some canvases for. Uh, Paris Motor Show, and that was great. I have to say, I, I, it was it was nicely how they start to using my uh, differentiation to be uh, get get in some interesting level what nobody did in Škoda. So I, I start to feel good, you know, like they they found in my uh, positive uh, side. Yeah, that was good time. Yeah, I think we, what we did in Škoda was quite unexpected because. Uh, it was very dirty painting and they somehow, you know, Škoda should be like very uh, kind of like uh, for family, very clean, very uh, clever, communicated. And then we come with this super abstract painting and somehow was nicely together, like nice contrast. Uh, I was very happy for But I guess it also makes a lot of sense, right? Because they, because when you talk about family, you're not just, it's not just about the parents, but it's also the kids as well. So if you've got all sorts of like bright, colorful artwork, it, it makes total sense too. Uh, you mean you have to spend some extra time? No, I'm, I'm saying because you said that that, that it was um, uh, you were surprised because um, 
you know, uh, Skoda is kind of quite traditional and family orientated, and and you were doing this like really expressive graffiti style um, artwork, and I was just saying that it also, you know, if you talk about families, families very much involve kids, and if it appeals to kids, that's also really important because they can often be the driving factor for what the parents buy at the end of the day. So it was smart that they used that side of you to promote whatever product it was that they were promoting. Yeah, that's true. But I think this kind of stuff, uh, it was more like dirty painting. Uh, maybe what I'm doing now, it's more for kids, these pink panthers and stuff like this. But I, they never, uh, they never like let me do this, right? It, it, this is too... Uh, there is some corp. Um, let, let's say you have to. Uh, yeah, there's copyright yeah. issues. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. This kind of stuff. Uh, it yes. was we 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 don't want to stand to this kind of uh, point. So it was very dirty. But uh, yeah, I think for Skoda, when I started 2013, it was completely uh, different. You know, more more like very uniform, and then. We somehow, with Joseph Kaban, he was very open. We can more uh, looking for some more artistic stuff, and it was it, it, it was good time when the street art and graffiti start to be a little bit more in adverts. And yeah, I was in the right moment in a good place, and we, we uh, I think it was good. Yeah, and and they they were they were not afraid, but um, yeah, uh, it takes like four or five years to get this point. <laughs> right. Are they? Are they quite? I guess are they quite strict, right, and quite serious in their approach in general, with regard to design. I mean, I'm imagining it's maybe, maybe rightly or wrongly so that it's quite conservative in the way that a brand like Volkswagen would be. You know, given that it's part of the group. Yeah, definitely it was, but luckily the everything running kind of like. Uh, naturally so the new guys coming the new designers there is a young blood and of course i remember when i when i stopped the first time to the design studio uh, there was nobody who wearing sneakers it was the time when i was only one who bring uh, some sneakers to the to the design kind of studio you know uh, the people were wearing this 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 uh, leather sharp shoes and everything was clappy clappy on the on the on the you know on the on the studio. <laughs> uh, you don't know who was lady who not you know this kind of stuff. So I was all the time. Uh, I also bring. <laughs> I also bring some skateboard. <laughs> and I was. Uh, yeah. I remember the floor was so beautifully flat. And I was when the bosses left home. I was just riding the skateboard between the model hall and, and our studio was so uh, kind of nice, you know. Then I have to almost uh, go to the garbage with cable because it was full of clay on this grip, you know. But yeah, uh, uh, I think uh, it was very conservative, but now they found they have to be much more, they have to really, because it's also what the other brands doing there. When, when you see they are more uh, briefful, you have to you have to catch and you have to go in and otherwise you you will fall asleep, right? I think. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I, but I think I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that everywhere now near enough um, has got a lot more relaxed with that sort of thing. You know, I think we, we, when I went, I mean, my first job was at Jaguar. I was just talking to a guy about this the other day. Um, you couldn't really, I mean, I remember I wore shorts a couple of times, but people were like, dude, you can't be fucking doing that. You know, they didn't say that, but it was like, you know, you definitely weren't wearing a hoodie and sneakers, you know, for sure not. And you had to really yes. be, be careful, you know, even... At, at one stage, I remember they even <laughs> said, like, you know, uh, uh, no t like no T-shirts. And and so we were like, what, like even like chinos and a nice like V-neck jumper with no, 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 shirt only. But I mean, it's it's changed now. You know, it's uh, I think I think 
everywhere has to. And it also makes no fucking sense in design, right? Where nobody from the public is allowed in there in the first place. So, I, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's good, I guess. It's great what you said, because I remember from last time when we do the first round of our podcast, what was some technical issue, you said very interesting thing. You said like, Hey, now the fashion in the car industry is really open, right? Rudy, sneakers, everything. And we, we ask it, what will be next step? And you said nice thing. You said like, next step, you will rock if you bring some gentleman suit and you will look like James Bond. This will be next level. And I really like it. Yes. I can imagine to come very, very contrastable, but very classy. I think it's really cool. Yes. Yeah, I want to see you like that, Marek. I, you know what? I, I, in, this, in the design studio, but even more so, you know what I want to see? I want to see you graffiti a fucking wall in like a three-piece suit, like super, super smart, you know? Like where, with like your spray cans it's and cool, everything man. on the street, but you in like a really cool suit. You know, there's a... There's a um, there's a docu there's a documentary on Netflix called uh Searching for Sugar Man and it's about a it's about it's a, it's a f incredible story about a musician from Detroit that n was never famous in America nobody knew who he was but somehow his record got to South Africa and to Australia it was massive i mean he I, w I grew up in South Africa and he was huge, like as big as the Beatles and the Stones. He comes from America, but nobody knows him in America. And anyway, the documentary is all about this mystery around him and his story and, and everything. It's crazy. But the really cool thing about him, and this guy's a dude, right? He was, this is like, he, he's an old boy. He's like in his, I think he's, he must be 80 now. But back in the day, um, he had this like multi-platinum record in, in South Africa and Australia, for example, maybe New Zealand too. And he was still working fucking construction in, in America because the record company didn't pay him. And he used to do hard okay. labor, like demolition, like with big hammers and smashing down walls and, and, and that sort of thing. And they interviewed some of his friends for, on the building site and they showed pictures of him coming to work in a fucking three-piece suit to a construction site to smash these wow. buildings down because he was just he was a fucking artist you know he he, he was like, like that was his thing and he didn't it's so cool so i want to see you do that when you graffiti like a wall and you dress up like proper elegant you know what i mean i promise you now i really promise you because i really fell in love with this idea and I want to do this dirty painting, what I can do, and I will dress like, wow, you know, you can see everything will be there. But yes. first of all, I have to get yes, a bit yes, uh, yes. here down and get more shape. <laughs> dude, I, so I, have the, I have the same shit as well. I'm not going to go on about this because I've already talked about this, but dude, I'm going, I'm on a massive health kick now. I've got, I've got so, so disgustingly unhealthy and, uh, and I, I, you know, I, I, I have to, I, I hired a trainer and nutritionist and everything. So that's why I'm drinking water oh, that's good. and that's uh, good. I've just finished. Yeah. I mean, I'm in week six now already. So it's, uh, nice. and I'm 10 kgs down, but, uh, I've still got like oh, another 106 well, to man. go. So Very well. yeah, yeah, a good, a good it's track. a good start, but I've got a long way to go. Yeah. I, I understand. But, that. I um, start to walk. Yeah, you should walking do that. Also, a lot of like, yeah, I, I like it so much. Walking is really great. Run, running also, but every day going to work, yeah, and back, it's great. Highly recommend it. And dude, don't let don't let anybody tell you that walking doesn't do anything. Dude, walking is like a really fucking good fat burner because you need your like it's your heart rate needs to be low, right? You can't like. I believe it. Yeah. It's the best fat burn, fat burning tool. So, yeah, that's good. Dude. Keep it up, and I will. I will too, Mario. I love it. I will too. I love it, man. <laughs> cool, man. So, listen. Tell me. Let's let's talk a little bit about the graffiti background and and where where that came from. I know we've discussed it already, but maybe we can shed some light on the 
on the subject for the for the wonderful viewers out on the internet. Yep, that's true. We last time we we talked a lot about it, so it will be nice to mention now because we we did in public, right? So I think yeah, all all the stuff w w where why I am here now and I'm doing what I'm doing. It's it was a little bit start from graffiti because in 1994 I. I fell in love, which kind of like some graffiti in my street. It was like, I, 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 it was first graffiti almost in, in my country. And I was in there and I said like, wow, what is that? You know, who, who painting this kind of stuff here and why, you know? So then I start to found and I so start to like it, this creativity. Nobody is paying for you, but you put so much energy, so much risk. And somehow I really laugh, you know, the gra when you do group graffiti, it's amazing for me. You know, even trains, I love it, painting trains. I so love full painting of the train. It's great. Uh, I know there is some issue. I really know about it, but somehow it's, it's so beautiful for me. When, when, when something happened, somebody put so much money, so much course, so much talent, and then it's driving and some people see this and it's shocked them because it sh should be not there, but it's there, but it's beautiful. It's some colors, it's some impression, it's some, um, it's, it's so good. I, I really, really still like it. So that was my big start. And then I come to the school, I, I, I did some graphic designer, that was nice. But then I said, graphic is beautiful, but I like it objects. I really, from when I was a kid, I was fascinated with some bus big wheel and what is inside these screws and i see this so much 3d i was like wow what is that you know this looks almost like some face or looks like some flower and i was like who did it you know where, where did this come from and and somehow i was fascinated about it but later i found i really like clean design i really i feel it but i i, I didn't know about it nobody tell me you know my my dad is car mechanic. My mother, she was she was selling some stuff, and uh, she was a good singer, but she never have she never had career like that. But uh, my grandpa, he was uh, he makes some uh, jewelry. Yeah, he was good. He did by hand some small jewelry, and also he was fixing watches. I remember we we have a lot of tools from him. Some small one. We were so fascinated with my brother. So that that will start my. I start to like to express myself and start to painting and, and then start to do design and product design and car design. But now I'm coming back to graffiti. It's interesting how yeah. I really like this uh, pure uh, minimalistic stuff. Yeah. So dude, I, I, the thing that attracted me to your work is that there are very few people in the in the car design community that I know of anyway that are that are do, that's doing the kind of art that you are doing and what I mean by that is like just some of it is just so super super loose and free and you can just see that there's no um uh, uh, pretense that you just are, are letting it flow. Like, uh, I mean, we talk about this stuff all the time. Like, oh, just have fun. But most people, most artists, designers, um, creators, when they say like, oh, just have fun, it's kind of being disingenuous almost because what, and, and, and also using the term doodle, for example, because, you know, actually it's not a fucking doodle. You've just spent two days trying to create this, perfect image that's not a fucking doodle so like what's really interesting Good to work. me about your work is that it is such a a complete 180 from this very precise design work you know where there's like just completely loose artwork there's a lot of designers that do art but and and beautiful art as well but i don't see a lot of guys doing the kind of like complete 180 from from the design work, you know, in the way that you are doing it. And I, I think the results sometimes are, I mean, it's, it's so fucking cool. It's really, really cool. Yeah, but it's interesting what you said, Sam, because uh, uh, in the beginning I was like, 
Why I like to do super clean uh, photoshops, really minimalistic. I really like to do that. I enjoy it like even six hours. I can sit and make so nice and I feel it. But on the other side, I really like to just lose. And I, I was like, okay, I'm fish, you know, my, 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 my kind of like symbol is a fish. So we are like two together. So I think I'm really a uh, nice yes. example to that. So I, I, I found like this creative part and this kind of like sensitivity design mixed together. And in the beginning I was like, wow, so you want to be painter or you want to be car designer? Come on, who you want to be? And I was like, okay, that's the very tough question for me, you know, because I love a lot of things to do, you know, not only like one thing. So I try to be more open, like I like paintings, I like fashion, I like, uh, I don't know, I like people, I like, you know, I like nature. Uh, so I was like, let's do together both, you know, you are a car designer, but you are a painter. And together it's nice balance because you do some perfects and stuff, but then you do this loose stuff. And it's so cool how contrastly it is. And I start to enjoy it and I, you know, uh, sometimes uh, people like ah, so who you are you know why who you are you know ask Elon Musk what he a boring company what he have car company what he build rockets and tell him he's schizophrenic uh, worker I don't know you know it's yeah, these guys just have passion and he can do whatever you know I can do pasta I can do this because I have passion to do things you know you don't have to be just car designer come on it's just limited yourself you can be whatever you can you can do fashion also, you know, you can do everything if you, if you have this feeling. So I, I try to be very open and also it's helped me to create interesting design if I not limited myself. So the painting, the loose stuff, painting the retro stuff, the classic cars, they are so beautiful and there's almost everything already, man. It just we can just have a look and translate to to this age and you will build so much beauty you know so i also have certain of respect to the classic you know i really like it so i'm painting classic cars you know i don't painting like i painting all bmws i painting the cars when i was uh so passionate when i was a kid and i saw the poster in my toilet my daddy yeah. put the toilet and there was two alpinas i remember old alpinas i think it was three series and I was every time when I'm going like small kid to the toilet, I, I have to watch this, you know, like, and it's so much coming to print to my uh, brain. It's like, I so love it, this face and this six series face, you know, like, uh, I, I love it. And when I paint yeah, it, I feel yeah, yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. And dude, you know what, those, those cars, I think are, are, are like, um, it's a real exercise in proportion, right? Because I think the the, um, the graphics are so simple and the surfacing is so simple, but there's everything to be said about the proportion and the relationship of the volumes in between the lines. I've tried to draw like an, an E30 a bunch of times, you know, just without, with not in Photoshop, like on a with a with a pen and paper, and to get those proportions right it's you can't do it the first time you know you've got to you've got you've got to practice it you're right completely this is this is beautiful proportion i think they the, the the cars what they built that time was uh they really they were masters you know like we we have so many limits today to, to do something like that but uh you're right it's it's really respect job like it's so beautiful still like everything is balanced everything is in right proportion it's unbelievable you know and i really respect that I, and i inspired from that when i do some cars today i watching these cars and i see how they are related and uh, this help a lot to build something beautiful because if you're watching porsche for example people are still stuck on this porsche because so genial you know so beautiful down all this, how is going? Yeah. How is the real yeah. lamp? Everything lines going to this point, man. This, 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 this like uh, stencil. You know, you can just take it, think about, and transfer to something else. You know, and it's great. It's just beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. But Marek, your the the paintings that you do where 
you've kind of you've done like a series of characters so if i if i imagine now there was like i don't know for example like pink panther and uh i can't remember the other characters but a bunch of different cartoon characters and then you over the top you so it's like if you imagine like layers in photoshop so on the base layer you've got your characters and then on top of that you draw the outline of the car and then the background you'll make like a solid color for example when you do Very the well, outline of the car how are you how are you doing that i mean are you are you marking it out with pencil first before you go and spray the outline because if you fuck up at that point you've ruined all those characters underneath right Man, I, I will be very, very honest, yeah, for sure. Um, in the beginning, I was trying to do by myself, okay? So I take a, I, I measure the canvas, I put the Photoshop, and I put the picture, and then I see, and, and then I try to mark it and doing without any projector. It takes so much time, and I don't have so much time. So I was like, hey, man, should I really uh, play with my ego and this kind of like, if I'm good enough, uh, should I do this? Like, maybe I'm too old for that. So I just look for me. The message is like, I, I'm, I'm doing my, my concept is about covering, 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 adding, adding, adding. So this is what about. And I, 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 I sketch some characters, what I really like, what for me is like Pink Panther is a Belmondo, you know? Pluto is some other guy, but I have everything is have some symbol, but it's my little bit personal thing, you know, uh, from childhood or something. So once I, I did some polo t-shirt, Lacoste, and it was really big. And then I come and I say, yeah, man, this Lacoste is good, but it's not enough, you know. So I start to just, which black brush, I just repainted very roughly the sketch of uh, 9-11. And I show it to my wife and she like, wow man you you move it so far away with this you know this is it you know and she's good on that she has very good taste so i really trust her and i yeah. said oh really i really i start to watching again and 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 we found when i will just repaint it repaint it but still keep it the original one and and and, and this this is it you know so honestly all these cars I really respect it and I keep it right proportion because I put a projector, you know, I put projector, I put the lines okay. and then which lines I just spread roughly. But um, I think this is a good way. I also like the way when I project and then I have projector and in dark, I take whatever color I found and just try to do and then you have some mess, you know, but in right proportion. And this is, this is cool. I, I like it. How long are you spending on each painting? Uh, sorry, I didn't didn't hurt you. How how long do you take to do each painting? It's a depend. I, I think sometimes it's it's never I never finish it. You know, I have some paintings when I I already take a picture and I promote them, but when I when I am in the studio and I start to open them every time i put some line there that's i like it you know I, for me it's never like I, I never have a concept how will be look and i'm start to doing no i just start to do and do and uh, every time i edit 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 and it's for me like never ending you know like even today when i had this exhibition i i put so much color backgrounds and i said mom maybe that was wrong maybe i should choose one maybe pink on gray and all this canvas should be one color but inside the car so many colors you know so i'm i'm trying to move forward further because i do every time when i do do that's the only one way how i can develop myself this is what we talked last time right the one key how to mm -hmm. move in what you do is just do and when you do you will move right right Yes. So, right, we were talking because, right, the question that I asked you last time was, how do you get to the point where you start to find your style? Or how do you, or, or okay, if you want to even take it back a step before that, how do you really improve in something, right? It's easy to say, okay, 
I've got to get better. But how do you get better? And you get better by doing more and yeah. more and more and more. And I mentioned yeah, my we, friend uh, Ivan Schmatov, the, uh, sell, sell Porsche to buy Porsche. Uh, yeah, shout out like to him. Ivan. Um, and he was he was talking he was talking about the experience that he had when he went to Fortsheim, where he arrived at university, and he thought he was already great because he was like at the top of his university in uh, uh, in Russia before he came over to Fortsheim. And he stuck up his sketches, and one of the the tutors said to him, "Whose is this?" And they and they said, "Right, well, Ivan said it was mine." And he's like, "You need to turn take this shit down." And he's like, "If you don't get better by next week, then I'm I'm gonna get you kicked off the course." Now, obviously, that's not really how I would like to handle things, but that's not the the point. The point is that that okay, of course, Ivan was pissed off at first. But he, he was like, how do you expect me to get better by next week? And he basically said to him, I want you to take a stack of Xerox paper and I want to see that every single one of those fucking papers is full by next week because you need to start putting the effort in. You need to put your time in to, to get the coordination between your eye and your hand. You know, you've got to reduce that distance yeah, that's so cool that one. what you are seeing is is realizing with your hand. And this is interesting that you brought that up last time as well because you said, like, you know, I was doing more and more and more. And I had a period where I was really struggling, where I was almost depressed because of um, you couldn't, you weren't happy with the work. And the solution for you in this moment was just to make more, to keep going, to do more. Exactly like you said, I, I was uh, all winter and the spring, I was like, try to find some new strong concept, you know, like in art, like I was really like, maybe car, painting car, maybe it's not good because some people don't like cars, you know, they think it's some evil, you know, they, they, they bring some bad air and something, you know, and, and I said, why I should painting cars, man? The people, people maybe don't like it, you know, nobody will put on the wall. And I was really like almost get out from this idea to painting cars. I was like, let's do something more minimalistic. I want, I like Pollock. I like Rotko. Let's do something super simple. And because I was also looking for something, I think they have two kids. I have a family. I want to be quick. I don't want to spend so much time, you know. But uh, I was doing like almost half year research when every time when I went to the studio, I was almost crying because it was so shit. Nothing was good. I, I, I didn't touch nothing very well, but then luckily something and I start to believe on this idea. I'm car designer. I should paint in cars, whatever, what, what doesn't matter because cars are not just cars, you know, cars are something much more for me. Cars are really objects with a lot of e e emotions. And I think this is really beautiful. You know, I want to have a, you know, when we were kids, a lot of people telling like they have this posters of Countach, F40, a lot of this beauty, right? You remember these classic posters when they were so nice in some black Yeah, area? yeah, of course. Man, that's, that's, that's the, 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 the boy dream. And I said, if, if like a kid, we put it, then it's good. Then I'm in good direction because when the kid feel it, kid one of these, have right. it when he grow mm. up, that's that's it you know it's nothing wrong with that so painting cars it's for me even better than uh painting girls or painting nature or painting apples you know okay how many people do that a lot a lot i can tell you but if you do cars it's not so many people because a lot of people uh, who are painting cars they watching technically you know i want to be great in highlights last time we was talking about right. and they right. they, they want to achieve perfectionism yeah. But no, I want to, uh, when I yes. paint in cars, I, I a little bit make jokes from that. And also, you know, who is uh, buying cars? Some people are really crazy. I mean, who buying these super expensive cars? This don't, don't have to be every time nice person. Can be even bad person, you know, who have money somehow he, you know, uh, somehow. <laughs> so I, I, I want to, I want to yeah. telling, telling the story. Uh, who is uh, 
who is buying old BMWs? In my country or in Romania, there is a lot of gypsies doing like that. But the cars are beautiful. But in my country, if you're driving black BMW, you are a gangster, you know. But it's stupid, you know. It's not like that. It's just beautiful car, great sitting on the road, beautifully tough to drive, and I love it, this car, you know. So uh, uh, it's I, I just try to be myself, and and I believe on cars. I really believe on cars. It's it's beautiful sculpture. So what 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 is your is your is your favorite the favorite car is a BMW is that would you say that's your favorite brand? Um, in, yeah, I, to be honest, when I start to study car designing, uh, maybe ten years ago, I really love Audi. You know, I think Audi TT it was the car when I really said, man, I want to study car design because Audi TT. And I have it then. Okay. I, I have it like three years, uh, the first one generation. Beautiful. I love it. It, it. They're also smiling for me like this is car for ladies. But I said, ah, come on, whatever, you know, I just like it and I, and I enjoy it. <laughs> uh, and to be honest, Audi at the time was so great. I, I really like the Steppenwolf and all these beautiful cars. At the time, like, even yes. Even today, when I see Q7 on the, on the road in, in proper wheels, Oh man, it's so cool and still beautiful, fresh design or R8. I love R8 on, on reality when you see. So that was my favorite brand. And I do a lot of in the study, a lot of Audis. But to be honest, when I, when I later, I found like uh, BMW is so, so charismatic. So it's a little bit sporty and energy and very well driving. And I have six cylinders. So for me, this is my first six cylinder. I really like it, how the car how energy you have, how it, everything is correct. I think they balance it so nice. So uh, I'm happy with BMW in this one. But the child, the child, but the childhood dream, like the childhood car, what was the, what, what, like growing up, was it, was it, was, was that BMW? I think BMW was something where my daddy put me, but uh, I, I, to be honest, I, I don't have this poster. I just see from the people and everything, and I never have this car poster on my back. Yeah, I never. I have this Tatra, you know, these trucks like like Dakar, Paris, uh, Paris Dakar. Yes. Know? So I have yeah, this yeah, huge yeah, Tatra yeah, 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 driving yeah. this sand, you know, a lot of logos there. Like, it was like uh, Barum, Continental, so many logos, so many companies. And I was like, wow, this is cool how, how color and how, how many logos there and everything so i was i was growing with this on my uh top of my bed you know so but bmw definitely influenced me i remember very well yeah, yeah. i i mean growing up for me as well i was never i didn't really have um i didn't really have cars on my on my on my uh on my bedroom wall but i remember like i mean bmw was but BMW was the thing for me. Like, I, I mean, we we didn't have my my parents didn't have one, but like friends' parents did, and and I I will always remember the E30. You know, always that that first that was like the first BMW for me that I just it's ingrained in my head. I mean, I'm a big Porsche fan as well. I've always loved the 911 as well. I love 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 the 911. And I always have done as well. Um, it's probably those two brands. I'm not talking about today, obviously. I mean, but you know, back in the day, it was it was BMW and Porsche. And I probably maybe say BMW over Porsche because BMW was the first. You know, there's nothing like your first. So I have to say, yeah, I've got a strong, soft spot for that brand. Yeah. To be honest, Porsche for me when I was a kid was a little bit like a funny car, like looking a little bit like open eyes, like some froggy or something. I was never feeling like, wow, this is something what yeah. I really want to drive. It's like, wow, you know. But then right. uh, I think it's like maybe five years ago when I start to really like start to realize it, how beautiful it is right. and how my kids, how my daughter like, ah, Porsche, Porsche, once I want to be, a, I want to have a Porsche. They really like it. It's so nicely reacted yeah. to the kids also it's cool well i think the, the if you look at like the i mean i guess everything before the the 993 maybe 
you know, where there was this real, okay, you've obviously got the silhouette, which hasn't, I mean, it's evolved, but it's still the same thing. But you have these, like, the headlights. It's like this section growing out of the hood, you know, which is for a car that cool. size, that kind of sculpture is, it's really cool. And, and, and I guess at the time, quite unique. But I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, well, there was a Citroen DS and, uh, various other things but i mean it's not really the same thing it's not the same thing for me you know same, if you yeah. consider the compact the compact proportion and and just clean you know there was there was you can take off all the the shiny bits and you've still got this beautiful pure form which i think was was very unique and beautiful and timeless I think how the Porsche did exactly like you said, like the bonnet is going nicely smooth down and how they keep from this beautiful shoulders continue to the front lamps. It's so beautiful done. Uh, I, I, that's why I cut uh, yeah. and make a recover racer from this kind of because it's really you can you can nicely build from this this kind of simple sculpture. Uh, I think it's really great. They should more walking with this kind of dividation. I mean, yeah, completely. And if you look at the, I mean, the first generation 911, the the F model, you know, pre, before the before the the pre 73, before the impact bumpers, the, if you look at the way that um, the cars have been, it's been finished off, you know, not just the section, but the way that the the bumpers have been resolved, you know, and the details of the little air intakes by the indicators and everything on that car is, is just so beautifully done you know it's it's uh it's yeah, it's amazing true. like if you look at if you if you compare some of the other cars at that time you know very big like um and not so yeah they they did a great job with those cars definitely it's even in proportion in kind of like volume it's just minimalistic as possible you know it's it's a pretty masterpiece so i'm sure yeah, completely, completely. Um, but I also, when I Marek, tell me something. Me did also, you? Like, yeah. No, no, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. Carry on. No, no, no. You go. You no, go. I mean, you go. Kunta. <laughs> when, but when I see Kuntas, but I mean the the maybe the, the really the first one, it's it's so unique. Down also like when you're watching from the from the back, how how strongly this part and then. It's, tiny stuff and then very strong and from the side view how they cover it village is just beautiful it's unbelievable how they how they manage this ufo spaceship you know it's uh, I, I really like it it's it's really one of my favorite card touch it's beautiful well, hold on one second i want to show you something wait you have some model there right I'm sure. Or you will bring your old poster. I don't have... No, I don't... I, I, well, I will show you some posters as well because I got some from uh, Ivan Shmatov. I have to show you in a second. But I got this as a gift as well. This from is, uh, From yeah. the... This is fun. Oh, fuck, I don't know. What, can you see that? Yeah. Can you see it's that? so beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful. You, ah, there we you go. see there this? We go. I got this from. I, I have to. Real village house cut. So beautiful. Yes. Yeah, man. This 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 is proper. Scar, it's awesome. You know? I got this. This is what about you know. I love this color. Also. I got this ah, from yeah, exactly. uh, Michele. I have to give him a shout wow, out quickly, Marek. So nice. uh, Michele Leonello. It's beautiful, this car. Shout bravo, out to Michele. Bravo. Thank you very much, Maestro. Man, love it's so... This. Wow, sorry. Dude, yeah, I was... Yeah, it's beautiful done, man. Yeah, no, it's... It's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And, it, dude, this doesn't I mean, even have the wing on or anything. And I love this, like this, without all the extra stuff, you know. You just look at it. And it's also still simple, huh? It's still simple. This car don't need to yeah. have this wing, to be honest. It's just beautiful how it is, because it's even more simply. I, I so like it, man. 
It's very good quality, I think. Huh? This one is have to be expensive model. Yeah, it is. I, I guess so. Yeah, so I, that's why I have to. We have to give uh, Michele huge respect because uh, I don't know. He, I think it's Italians are nice like that, right? So they like, you know. I hardly knew him, and he's he he. Yeah, he sent me this beautiful car, and I, I yeah, I don't know. I was taken away. It was uh, it was a beautiful gesture. Very nice. It's very nice. Um, but dude, I was I was never really. Um, I don't know. I was never really. I don't think I paid enough attention to it, because I was never a, a big diehard Kuntash fan, and I, I I was only really, I don't know, maybe in the last sort of five years or, or or yeah, I would say the last five years that I really come to appreciate this. I think it was also seeing them in 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 person as well. There's a there's a place here in Berlin called the Classic Remis, and they've got a they've they've got a quite often there's a white one there, and that car is wow, fuck, it's amazing, and uh, started to really pay attention to the proportion and what the surface is doing, and and um, yeah, and and the simplicity of it, you know. It's super modern. I, I don't know, man. What they what they really built with this uh, proportion is just like nothing was that like this before. I think uh, they they really uh, was, were brief. But uh, I have the same with Porsche. For me, for Porsche five years ago was like, hey, man, everybody talking about it is so mainstream. You know, I, I don't take care about it so much. But right. uh, it's coming to me. Yeah. Uh, like like for you, this car. But and that, for me, it, this is exactly like that. It was kind of like I remember when I was like I don't know eight nine years old. A friend of mine was like, "Oh yeah, the Lamborghini Countach, you know the Countach," and I looked at it and I was like, "Yeah, it's I mean, it's it's obviously loud, you know. It's it's yeah. it's and so I just I never really paid attention to it. And then everybody was, as you said earlier on this this before this car. There was nothing else like it, you know. So if somebody says that, oh yeah, that um, that uh, Gandini wasn't like, you know, he didn't do anything amazing with this car, you know, he made the decision to create this when cars look completely different at the time. So that's the genius of it, you know. And then when you, if you start to really study the surfaces and the transition up up close. You know, there's there's like there's a right. real oh, fucking hell. You can't. It's difficult. But there's like a beautiful right. section in in the surfaces over here. You know that you that you don't Man, notice. Nice, you know, if you see nice. it from a distance, it just you know what I mean. It just looks like a nice. yeah. Anyway, and it's it's a beautiful. I I'm a big fan. Big fan. I'll stop you know, talking the car about is it because I'm here when you're yeah. I'm not great really, at that sort of thing. Here, you know. It's unbelievable how flat the car yeah. is. Like, it's, it's proper sculpture, yeah. really. You know, when I when I have uh, sure. my first TT, I, I I somehow was not sure to sell him because it was super old and I don't get so much money. You know, I buy. We will have a kid, so we need bigger car. So I have to sell my TT. But I was crying really when. The car was uh, driving out. I was really crying. I was going to garden. I was like, no way. So I was just thinking to keep this car in like investment and, and then sell it like art. You know, I believe in a couple of years, this this beautiful uh, car on the wall will be just beautiful sculpture. You know, like, and 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 uh, I also yeah. believe on that. I. I I'm not watching numbers. I'm watching cars really like something what uh, it's, it's like modern sculpture. You know, that's 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 my view. Marek, be, listen. Before I forget, you um, you painted a car, right? You painted that BMW. What? Tell me about that. Yeah, yeah. It was nice. Uh, it was nice opportunity to somebody, my good friend. He had this kind of like street art festival every year they 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 have this kind of like invite some artists and they painting city and this was special 
and they let me paint this free uh, series BMW. So I, I was uh, invited to paint, and I said, "Wow, what I will paint there?" You know, like of course I know art cars from BMW and the Warhol stuff like that. You know, Kit Haring and and they did really nice job. So I was like, "Okay, what I should do?" You know, should I painting there? No, no, no design. And I was like, "If I'm design." and I know uh, I was think opposite let's let's just like like smash this car you know like let's paint it let's 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 put like canvas you know this car so uh, they covered me car in white foil and I just covered the glass everything and then just start to paint very roughly I, I sent it to you right the example the, I mean the the video what we what we did and yeah, it was really nice. It was it was nice painting, and for this occasion, I also painting like eight meters big, uh, two two meters some big canvas where was the old three series. So they are standing together. The new one completely painting, completely smashed by 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 colors, and there was a big big canvas which some dirty but old one, you know, classic one. Would I like it to paint? It it was good. It was really good. It's a few years ago, I think. What what paint are you using on that acrylic? Uh, it's a it's a uh, it's also water water. Uh, you can you can whatever man. I just do acrylic. Uh, I can use also the wax uh, stuff. I can do dispersion. I mean the water mixed ones. It really doesn't matter for me. I, I, I don't have any specific. I'm using so much techniques together. Uh, I'm, I'm not, not limited at all. I am even painting now when you have a uh, water and you put a lot of brushes there, you know, just make them clean, not be uh, completely fucked. Uh, I'm, I'm painting with this color. I like it when it's dripping down, when it's dirty. So I start base like this, just painting with this dirty color from so many brushes where I put it there. It's nice. I like it. I mean, I like it too, but every time I try that, it's always a disaster. So at least you make it look, you make it look beautiful. I can't, I, I can't do that. But I probably haven't done it enough. You know, I would also love to do it more. You know, I, I had a few moments in my, in my time where I really uh, enjoyed this painting, but it's been, it's been a long time. I need to do it again because it it made me very happy because I was not worrying about G two fucking curvature. Exactly, me. That's that is about and what is beautiful, you know. That's the just uh, limit what we put it to our, uh, you know. You you put it. It's not beautiful for you, but maybe for me it will be beautiful. I don't know. I mean, well, you know, this for is me, just it's always I, what I struggle how with. How you want to see? Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. But for me, it's I always get frustrated with um, not being able to, you know, not the, the not always getting like these real punchy colors, you know, which you are doing. So I told you early on, like I did ages ago, I did uh, this portrait of a, I mean, of our dog. And then I also did a, a like a portrait of um, uh, Bruce Springsteen in this kind of like, just painted with knives and very expressive and whatever. But dude, I used so much fucking paint. I didn't use any water. I just, I was spraying, I was, I was squirting the, the, I got these tubes of acrylic and I was like using up all like full tubes on a small little painting. So it becomes very expensive as well. Nice. But, um, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you need layers. But then you have I this think, nice, think, uh, you need, yeah. on that, right? Yeah, this is true. That's the thing. That's it. That's exactly it. But, you know, it's also, um, you've got it. That's why I was asking you earlier on how long you normally spend when you're making one of these paintings. Because for me, it was like, you know, you do a layer and then you've got to dry it or you've got to wait for it to, 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 to dry or to harden. And then, you know, you can add more. Otherwise, it all kind of mixes in. Um, you ask me for spending That's, money. Um, I think how much time I spent. So I was like, more, I think you talk more about the, the 
spending the time because the time is issue. It's not question about no, money. No, I'm talking about time. About, yeah. No, I'm talking mainly about time. No, yeah, no, I'm yeah. top time, yeah. Okay. The, the money is not the issue, you know. This painting is, don't have to be super expensive. Only the canvas sometimes it's expensive. It can cost quite a lot. But sometimes I'm also doing my oven. I just buy the wood and I buy by myself. I put the, uh, the textile, you know. So it, it, it's also colors. Well, I have a lot of colors. So this is not the issue. But yeah, it's it's okay. You can, you can paint if you buy the sprays. Today, techniques of the sprays, they have a lot of colors, beautiful colors, and they are really well, uh, uh, let's say, uh, balanced. It's not like you spray it and it sucks and the color is different. You know, sometimes it's happened, some colors. So listen, you cut off when you were saying that uh, the spray now is uh, is very good. Yeah, I, am. I mentioned the Montana, the brand. It's a... Yeah, it's, a, it's, okay. a, it's a very good quality. There's a lot of uh, palettes. You can choose so many colors, almost like 100. And it's very good quality. And it's not expensive at all, you know. So uh, it's, it's not a question about money. If you want to pay, you can pay it a lot. But is this Are these like proper like spray cans that you would use outside? Or are they? is it something else? Uh it's, uh, yeah, it's spray and paint. Uh, I used to use a lot of spray and paint, but also uh, when I want to catch the proper colors and the best one, I using sprays. I also can spray it to some kind of like, you know, cap and then using brush and, and make it also some drippings or... Ah, okay, okay, okay. So you, but you never, you never uh, using spray paint inside? In, is not in your living right. room. Ah, no, no, of course. Sorry, I, it was wrong. Uh, I, I, I can hit all this. Uh, yeah, man, I use it a lot. When I was uh, younger, I spray a lot. And even without the respirator, it was really bad. Now I'm using respirator every time. But of course, I'm using inside so many. Uh, I spray it a lot. <laughs> Dude, we talked last time about... Um, Action Bronson and his artwork. Oh yeah. Is he? Did how? Did he influence you at all? Man, today I saw his Instagram and he was doing some cardio, and I was thinking about you because last time we so much to talk about him. To be honest, first of all, when I meet him, it was in music video. It was my first uh, kind of like hello, first impression. And it was funny music video. He he was really big and he was rapping there. And it was looking like, wow, this guy, he, he has something, you know. Then I start to watching his kind of like this. Yeah, he, Fuck, yeah. that's delicious, you know. I really like it, this man. How yes, he yes. enjoyed the food. Yeah. How he traveling in New York for some special place for pizza, for cafe, for this. Uh, it's yeah. beautiful. How he really uh, appreciate good yeah. stuff, quality, you know. And uh, this guy is super. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he inspired me a lot. He's a proper artist. He's really proper artist, right? And and then he started to make uh, paintings, yeah. right? I was like, wow, no way! And the paintings was yeah. really something what I like to do, like a little bit kids painting and make yeah. fun, not so much serious. Yes. Yeah, man, Action Bronson. It's really one of the guy who I really respect. Uh, once I was wrote him also like sending him some invitation for something and he never replied me back but i some time to time i try it because sometimes for example some graffiti legend you never graffiti fucking tool, know yeah yeah i i wrote them and yes. i almost buy it from him some art the guys communicated and then i like wow it's so cool like it can be easy to uh, wow. catch uh, contact with the people today because internet yeah. is it's no limited you can really attract the people like for yeah, that the, I mean that dude, that's one of the real great things about about the internet. I mean, there's some very shit things, but there's some great things, and being able to connect with absolutely anybody, you know. I mean, you you know you you think it's impossible, but you never fucking know. You know, you just never know that the person might just respond. You just you just don't know. You've got to try, because um, definitely. 
Yeah. Definitely. Don't be afraid. Just just do, you know. Sometimes you will be surprised at how nicely he's just be not afraid about some small fails. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um Marek, your um time in China which we spoke about last time briefly and uh, I think we should talk about it again because it was quite interesting. I um can you can you tell me a little bit about your your experience in China? Okay, I have very well now. Thank I, you, man. I, um, okay, I uh, it, it was yeah, the the China uh, experience was very interesting. I mean, the way how they are working and uh, uh, how China is 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 pretty impressive. You know, like they they working twenty four seven. You know, really, when you when you when you get the project there, it's like. It's like, like wow! Well, it's like one month you are you are not going to wash your clothes. You know, it's like just like super intense. And uh, when you're going in ten home, ten p.m. Uh, normally somebody call you, come back. We have to prepare this and this, and 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 you have to be very uh, all the time in the studio. It's they are working really hard. People, I think I was really surprised because. It's very different than is uh, this kind of like European behave to work. Everything is set up properly. Everything has some very definition. But in China, it's just like they are. That's why they are so successful because they are. They don't have so much limits. They don't have so much kind of rights. You know, like we just like ah, oh, it's six. Let's go home, and it's okay. You can go, but they're normal. Uh, you have to be there. You have to. If you have projects, doesn't matter. There will be a lot of changes. And it's funny when it was a situation when the, the boss, the big boss, coming to the toilet. He brings some magazine and he sees some interesting car there. And he call. He picked up the phone and he said, "Look, uh, in two days I want to one to one uh, this car. I want to see on the hall." And, 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 and all people running, nobody is saying, no, it's not possible in two days. No, they just mill it and they just do it, you know. It doesn't matter what. It's um, it's, it's, it's a completely different world. They, they are really pushing, my friend. They are really pushing. And one couple yeah. of my colleagues, when they win some concept cars, they just one month, they don't have weekend, they don't have Saturday, they don't have... Sunday, uh, it was really tough. Yeah. Some people working crazy, really crazy, and I really respect that. I was lucky; I don't have to do that like that. I don't know why, but I was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, I, I met one guy there. Uh, it was my boss, and he he somehow figure out uh, I'm I'm kind of like good to bring some value of creativity. And, and he keep me sketches, just sketches, sketches, what I like it, bringing ideas uh, from some brands. And I was pretty happy about it. it yeah, it was, it was nice. But to be honest, in my and perspective, you, uh, yeah. Yeah, please. No, 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 carry on. No, 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 carry on, carry on. In your perspective. <laughs> no, and I just want to show a little bit my perspective on this because uh, a lot of people know how it's in China. I, I didn't say something new, but in my case, it was like Corona and I was not so much job in Europe. So I said, oh man, we have to do something. So I get this opportunity to go there and we, we plan it like after two months, my family will be joining me, right? That was the plan. So I just said, yeah, man, I have to, okay, I have to risk that. So I went there. It was like Corona problem and they don't let my family bring, you know, like they said no family members allowed to come to the uh, China uh, country. So it was really bad, you know, the China land. So I was like five months without kids, without family, you know, uh, it was really, it was really tough. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm not really enjoy it, but in the same time, of course, I don't want to get mad. So I have to enjoy it to not uh, completely it was how it was and luckily my wife and with my kids we, we're getting stronger after that and 
and everything is nice, but it was really yeah. nice test to be honest. Yeah, I so as as I said last time, I remember. I mean, we didn't know each other, and uh, and I remember I was following you already, and I looked at your Instagram, and it was like the whole world is shut down. But you, Marek, was in fucking nightclubs and partying and buying cause toys and just like living it up, you know, having a great time. <laughs> That's true. And, uh, but then at the same time, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was such a strange, strange time. But I remember, I remember you like, because what was confusing to me is that, you know, the, the corona, corona started, well, we think it started in Wuhan, wherever, out in, in, in China. Yes. And then, and then everybody else in the, in the West, in the rest of the world was like, oh, that's fucking crazy. Um, and then eventually it came to Europe and, and, and America and all over. And, um, and then, and then everywhere else started shutting down. But then I think in this moment, China then started to open up again, I think, because that was the time where I saw you in these fucking nightclubs doing, I don't know, karaoke and all sorts of shit, dude. It's wild. It, yeah. <laughs> and then that was done because when I come to the country, I get like, almost four weeks a quarantine so this is the price when you get this quarantine they test you this is the price you can do this thing but the 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 scenario the the procedure is quite tough to be honest you know to get this party you have to you have to one month be isolated from the people and and they they, they this zero uh, this zero tolerant what they have it they really, when they, they, when they found one contact with Corona, they, they found on this clever application because they're using all the phones. You, you everything do by phone. It's amazing. It, in technology, is much more far away than we are in Europe. And they, they, they just found you in, because GPS, they found you was there uh, when was the contact of, and, and they contact you and they isolate you because they know who was in that moment uh, in this place. So they are crazy. They are, they, they are really, they can isolate you for so so long, right? So yeah, the the party was good. I, I have to say, we the people of China they are very nice. There was never issue like we are different, we are foreign. They are not not nice on us. No, it was opposite. They every time like, hey, you are here, guys. Perfect. Thank you. Ah, it was so beautiful. You know, you feel so safe. I, uh, I, d I don't have any this feeling in Europe, like in China, how they very well track us. And like, it was really beautiful. And even in party in some super discotheque, but people very calm. There was, I never see issue of some aggressivity or of some uh, violence or something. Right. It was really cool, you know? Wow. Yeah, dude, China's wild. I haven't, I, I've never been and I, I would love to go, but um, obviously, yeah, fucking hell, dude. The last three years is, or two years has been has been crazy, and I think it's just scared everybody quite a bit. And um, of course, all the shit now happening in 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 Ukraine and whatnot. It's uh, oh, all man, a bit it's, fucking it's scary. Mad, so we definitely, yeah, it's scary. Definitely man. don't want to, um, yeah. Definitely don't want to leave the the wife and kids alone because um, no. yeah, I Never just go I can't, I can't imagine go going through no. yeah no, and I don't think my wife would would fly to China now for sure not. <laughs> I think, so. but don't worry. China is uh, it's it's nice country, you know. They to be honest the. The, the level how they put to the car industry in this moment is the highest of all the country, you know, all the world. It's like last time I said, like this uh, very brief uh, thing, like when the artists in the time of Impressionism, you have to go to Paris to be in, in, the, in this most active place. So I, I believe Europe, America is not the most active place or what is in car design interpretation. You know? So if you want to do brief stuff and modern stuff, the China is the leader now. Uh, it's, it's true. 
I don't want to say nothing bad about that because they somehow deserve it. You know, they working so hard. They are clever yeah. people. They are not yeah, stupid. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and they just working yeah, of hard. Course they, not, yeah. they, we 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 teach them. They learn from us a lot. But they also want to bring something new. They are open for new stuff. Uh, we will see. We will see very soon. They will. They will really bring new value to the uh, to the game. I'm sure about. Yeah. It. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, because the thing is, like, there's only so much you can do with surface treatment. But I think in China, you'll really start to see new architecture in in vehicles in general. You know, really, really like proportions that you that we've never seen before and um as you mentioned earlier on what china seemed to be doing is um or i mean they've they've already done it in some respects is they've um you know made in china doesn't it's not this like negative thing anymore you know it's uh yeah, there's, there's so. so many great i mean most of the products that we all the Apple stuff, you know, is all made out there and they are totally capable of doing, you know, stuff to the, 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 the highest quality. But, um, you know, just on the design front as well, they are, they, they've, you know, established their own, they, as you said, they, they've learned from Europe and they, well, they've learned from the West, so to speak. And now they are doing their own thing with regard to design. You know, it's it's creating their own thing, and um, and I think you're right. It's only a matter of time before we start seeing some really, really new stuff coming out of China. Yeah, I, Very interesting. Let me let me say one. You didn't ask me for that, but let me say one thing. But I want to react it on that because. Yeah, I'm a little bit sad what I what I see today, how he's doing now BMW, how he's doing now Audi. It's for me like, uh, I don't know, Audi, to be honest. Um, I don't know, maybe it's better not telling nothing, but uh, it's just like decoration. No, work, sorry, you know? I feel, it. I feel, I feel like yeah. they, they have such much heritage, the old stuff like Quattro or uh, AT. It's so much clean, so much beautiful architecture, but what we see now is just an interpretation of the time, what we like it, what we was talking about. Yeah. And it's, I don't know, man, this, this, this company have so much, uh, so much power and heritage. So I'm not really BMW now, I don't know what they are doing, but it's um, somehow, uh, I think let's say it's like that great, last it? time when I was really impressed of the somehow what, what what was happened it was what mazda did you know mazda uh it's sort of done this be beautiful treatment of the side view and also the simple of the front and, and everything i i really like what mazda did you know how they how they start to play the surface yeah. very minimalistic this is so nice you know you can uh, also lexus is really great too. yeah lexus is very beautiful they playing so much stuff what Wow, it's, it's so nice to see how they are open. But in Europe, uh, it's not so much happened. Everybody's a little bit looks like afraid, you know, and it's a little bit stuck. But dude, what do you think it is? Because I like I have to say, um, I don't know. I, I, I probably haven't. Uh, I didn't say I haven't really commented publicly, but I mean, I can't say that I, I like anything that, that BMW are doing at the moment. And, um, you know, everybody's hating on their stuff and I don't want to jump on the bandwagon and do the same thing. But, you know, I find it very hard to believe that somebody like Adrian from Hoidonk doesn't have a vision. You know, the guy is, you know, he's clearly capable. And then you... I mean, the longer, you know, the longer you work in the industry, the more you realize that so much of these decisions are not just, it's not just up to design. You know, there's, there's so many different powers at play, you know, with regard to, I mean, whether it be marketing or, I don't know, fucking whoever. There's, there's like, there's literally thousands of people that, that, that influence the direction where these products are going. But I can't understand how BMW are, seem to... You know, there's there's little bits of things that are really interesting, like these. The, some of the bikes that they've that they've done are really really cool, but I mean, on the car front, it's I don't understand it at all. 
and and an Audi. Well, I don't know. I mean, there's it's <laughs> maybe not quite as, as severe, but um, the same like mine. No, well, but, but I mean, you know, the, I I just I I don't. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with BMW and Audi. Four, for example. We don't have to be criticized here. Yeah, you're right. I just want to say when you're watching the sketches, the sketches are so nice. You know, even this M2, you know, they're beautiful sketches. The architecture is correct. I like it. It's horizontal, vertical, so simple. But I think there is some problem between the guys who built this production and the design team. There have to be some issue. They are not communicate well, you know, or they don't control it. I don't know. But right. if you have so beautiful sketches and so nice ideas, wow, it's so bad you don't interpret it on the reality. It's so bad. I don't know. Yeah. But it, I mean, it could it could also be to do with with time as well. You know, when you look at how much time has been. You know, there's been such a reduction in the in the time frame that design is allowed to develop a volume. You know, and and produ uh, you know, you know the cycle the cycle the development cycle of a car has gone from like five years to three, and in some cases even less than that. You know, so I don't know, dude. It's uh, yeah, definitely. We don't maybe know. we need to go back su super super simple. I mean. I mean, like Hyundai, for example, are doing some really cool stuff. I mean, the Ionic, maybe that's the yes, the, yes, yes. the, the cyber cyber truck influence. But um, you know, maybe we should stop twisting and just uh, you know go back to go back to this. You know, <laughs> exactly. Good point. No, but Hyundai, what they are doing with Kia now, it's really beautiful. Uh, it's it's nice example how. They, they, they start to be so clean, minimalistic, strong. This is about, I think, this is very good design. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's true. I mean, dude, it, you know what would be really interesting? I mean, imagine if BMW, for example, tomorrow said, okay, listen, let's, let's go back to the fucking E30 and really try and... <sighs> And get close to that, you know, without it being retro, but where you go back to the essence yes. of it, you know, where you say, yes. okay, I know we can make, you know, obviously we can make these sculpted um, uh, organic wheel arches, but what if we just go back to, you know, very simple body sides and, and very almost product-like surfacing? on a BMW without all the fucking twisting, Man, you know, what the result would friend, be. I think it would be very interesting. I completely agree. And imagine if they start to build M1, you know, uh, the, I think R8 from Audi was like, wow. And everybody was waiting for something from BMW, you know, like, and never, never comes, you know, like, why? I don't know, because they have this beautiful no. M1. You know, this so beautiful architecture, everything was there. Imagine when they interpret it today, even like small, fast SUV, how beautiful the car will be, you know. So there is a yeah. lot of to do, but I don't know, uh, it will be sometimes nice when the companies will a little bit touch the heritage and bring it back, something what was there, because they did so good job at the time. But you... Yeah, it's true. But you know what's so difficult, Marek, is that, that, that you know, to, to re reiterate what I said before, is that the problem is that there is so many people involved in the decision making and yeah, design exactly. can basically exactly. execute, design can execute anything. But somebody, somebody right. has to say, okay, listen, all the, all the shit that we're doing now is not working. Let's go in a completely different direction. Go back to something more simple, more clear cut, and um, a more focused theme or vision. And but you know you need some you need people, the powers that be to make that decision or to buy into it's that decision yeah. or or vision, Completely. so to speak. And that's and that's the difficult thing. And like if you look at. If you look at Lamborghini, for example, I mean, 
dude, some of the shit that they do is just disgusting. It's absolutely fucking disgusting. <laughs> but in it, but, but you know what? But in in that in amongst all those things, there is like the hurricane, for example, which is yeah, like is you know, nice. it's it's kind of a, a go a go it goes back to that. You know, the the proportion. The proportion is already dramatic, but you know you've got this clean surfacing. You don't have twenty-five lines down the body side. You know you've got like, you know, silhouette belt lines. You've got the the roof line, belt line, and sill. You know how it should be, and then you've got the result is beautiful. And and I think that if 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 you know if you wanted to talk about BMW, for example, um. Which one of those things are they going to go? You know, like I, I don't know. You you need you need a vision. No, no, um, come on. And let's stop the um, criticizer. Yeah. yeah, let's stop the rich criticizer. Okay. And everything. I think we should we should escape this. Really, uh, I, I'm sure the people do maximum what they. Yeah, do, I've already probably got, nice I've already thing. said too much. Yeah, I also, but uh, definitely there is a, too much people, too much politic, too much stuff. So I I understand that, but yeah. It's, it is how it is. I just, I, I want to make it, but that's, what, I, sorry, if it wasn't clear, because I, I'm not always the most concise and articulate person to explain myself, but I, I'm saying, like, I don't, I find it very hard to believe that it's all down to design. You know, you see shit in the yeah. papers all the time or some genius on, on LinkedIn going like, oh, yeah, they should, they should fire the design director. It's like, it's, it's not all that, you know, there's, there's so many people in these organizations that have influence over these things. So I don't know. And they've got some, but, dude, they've got some incredible, incredible designers. Yeah, they, they definitely do interesting job and the, the company is amazing. But I, I believe it's really uh, much which chief designer. <laughs> I think it's 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 big big uh, issue. <laughs> you if you if you if you are good with your bosses, you have to sell it them something what is good, and it's up to you. Uh, the chief designer should be the guy who can change the game because he have a reason. The chief designer is not about just listen the bosses and listen the uh, guys who have money and pay. You know that's not about. You have to be. Game changer. You have to bring value. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> anyway, Marek, um, dude, what, what was it? Was there anything else that we spoke about last time that we didn't cover today that you can remember? Was there anything uh, specific that that we that I did lost remember, over? Man. We talked about I, I, China. We took okay. We talk about graffiti, about art. We we if we somehow nicely talk about. It. Maybe we don't talk about your paintings and your surfing. That was quite a nice issue. We didn't mention uh, your side. What was really cool because you painted also. You didn't mention so much, and uh, that's cool. Yeah, but I mean, I. Uh, yeah, I mean, I it's not really. I only did like a couple. I I I wouldn't call myself a, a, an artist in the way that you are an artist, you know. But I would like. But I would like to, you know. I would like to do more. You know what I really liked is um, when I, I when I was at college, um, we did a lot of uh, clay work, but like not clay automotive clay but like ceramic clay yeah. ceramic sculpture and like dude i i that was also great i love that i really really love that you know just the limitation of i don't know a pottery wheel like fucking getting a just spinning a cup around you know it was just really really cool and it's really like tactile and so uh, you, you get in you there also like it to touch the I, clay I, I, and, and model it and you like it, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's really cool. I yeah, like yeah. it too. Yeah, I'm into that. I'm into that. I'm into that. But I'm really into, I also like equally, I like to paint as well. 
and um, and w- and another thing we did as well at college was uh, print making, where we were doing like screen printing and uh, and also just you know we're, like uh, we had to make these uh, prints with uh, little rollers, and they it was I remember at the time because I had no ambition with printmaking or textiles or anything there was no um desired outcome and because of that i had so much fun doing it you know i just really enjoyed it there was zero stress because my expectations were completely low and i always think about that you know maybe you should maybe i should spend more time pursuing those things that have no desired outcome you know and I, I, I find myself, like when I've painted in the past, getting caught up in that desire to, to, to create something specific, you know. And then it falls short, doesn't meet my expectation, and then I get annoyed and stop. Looks like you have a super high expectation, higher than mine. <laughs> but especially with kids, you can well, play nicely, huh? You can you can do this model. You can paint with kids. They are quite good for the to coming back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I should I, I should really because. Um, but man, you're doing. Yeah, very my well. do- my doing, daughter's you know? super super creative. You're doing very well. What you do? I mean, this podcast is very yeah. famous, and people really know you for that. And it's also not so many people do like you. So big big respect for that uh, from my side. You know. Thanks, Marek. I mean, I, I do I do enjoy it, but uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of work behind the scenes, you know, setting these interviews up and 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 pick it, finding the right people, and then getting the time right and all the other yeah. stuff. Yeah. But when I'm sitting down and talking, it's it's great. It's great. Yeah, it's really cool. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, man. But dude, listen. I think we should we should probably wrap up. But um, uh, do you have um, any words of wisdom for the young graffiti artist slash designers out there wanting to get into the the creative realm? <laughs> Man, it's just like you know the the most thing is just be yourself, and of course like just enjoy you know i think the most important thing is just enjoy enjoy yourself enjoy every day you know it's not time to every day complain and just waiting for something just be happy every day right and do what you what you like to do you know just step by step slowly small things bigger things and will come you know but i think we should be happy every day not just waiting in summer to go some holidays but the rest of the year you are feel like like shit yeah. you know that's uh, that's not good so just do what you no, what make you happy <laughs> <laughs> all right well, great advice dude marek we have to meet up in person at some point <laughs> and uh, i don't know when or where let me know but if, uh, if you will yeah, be to do it and okay this will be nice i'll let you know for sure I oh, found cool. very nice pizza awesome. place here. Um, Great pizza, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm, well, the, listen, the reason why I'm such a overweight, unathletic person is because of pizza. Pizza is my fucking problem. This is the thing, right? I, I like people. People say like, if if they if 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 you get onto the subject it. of weight loss, it's like, oh, you need to cut out you need to cut out sugar. It's like I don't have a fucking problem with sugar. I don't care about sugar. Keep your sugar. For me, it's all about pizza and like bread and cheese. That that's like crystal meth, you know. It's Man. it's amazing. It's it's. I have uh, a concept. We go yeah. for pizza and then we walk in English garden and we will burn it, you know. But with some beers. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know, if we're lucky, you're gonna burn five hundred. You're gonna burn five hundred if you if you fucking lucky, and the pizza is gonna be about two thousand. But um, oh man, okay, that's tough. Anyway, Marek, it was a pleasure, dude, and I'm glad we got to do this again, and thank you, um, thank you very much. Thank you. You're great, man. Thank you very much. It was nice. 
I'm super tired, but no, you are great. You are great. We we managed to do that.